Welcome everybody to the second day of the MPGL, the main active pro gaming league season number seven. It is yet another best of one, although we have reached the playoffs now. And it is going to be TNC going up against five Eva here. And well, unless I'm mistaken, the loser will be straight out from the tournament tournament, unfortunately, even though this is the playoffs, still a best of one format here for now. And well, we're goes to TV, the English coverage for you. I'm gonna be coucher, joined by Grandis V once more, man. How you doing? Doing alright. To my knowledge, I haven't seen TNC play up against 5 Eva, but I'd expect the uh, latter to be favorited inside this matchup, but TNC did impress me yesterday with their play. Just in general, they looked pretty solid, so it'll be interesting to see how this best of one shakes down. We're going to open things up with a draw ranger for the TNC squad. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty strong hero to open it up with, of course, especially should they get the Visage to follow that one up as well. But I also haven't seen those two teams match up and definitely chat is happy for both of those. Of course, from different countries having a different fan base there as well. But I mean, Miracle definitely is a just kind of player that the entire Southeast Asian scene is a fanboy of almost, I could say. But what an opening, a center and an enigma. Yeah, very interesting coming out from 5 Eva. Their amount of team fight and team fight initiation is pretty much through the roof, but not necessarily something you're going to see very often. Against a Drill Ranger, though, I think having the Centaur as an early pick is reasonable, even after the 6.84 being nerfs to the Centaur's Aghanim slightly decreasing the damage reduction. It's still a very potent tool to have up against a Dro, and I think that 5 Eva might even throw the Centaur as their safe lane farmer, but um, even so, we're going to get through the next stage of bans very quickly. Queen of Pain picked up by TNC, then Phantom Lancer, Meepo ban, by themselves and Vengeful Spirit, the ban from 5 Eva. Yeah, I mean, the, the, those bans looks like they already know just what to ban out. Of course, they had the entire night yesterday to just kind of prepare themselves against the enemies. And oh, 5 Eva, it's gonna be a Naga Siren pick. Of course, everybody must be thinking now, Miracle Naga Siren. And it has been something that they will rely upon on their darkest days. Is it once again, though, just because? I have seen Fire quite often actually run a support Naga Siren as well and just kind of trick the enemies. Yeah, they do have that flexibility, but right now I'd be tempted to say that this is a core Naga for Miracle until we see otherwise later on. At the moment, their lanes are already fairly weak, and I think they wouldn't be able to support very easily a support Naga. That said, the utility they'll get out of Song if it's played as a support is still pretty high, and they'll still get that benefit even if it is played as a core, but... Um, maybe I'm selfishly hoping that this is a Miracle Naga. Yeah, it's it's really a treat to watch, to be honest, if it is, but for TNT now, I mean, to be honest, they have a decent enough lineup in dealing with the Naga, I suppose, at least with the Illusion, just Queen of Pain, having that Sonic Wave at her disposal. And also, Throw Ranger might just have enough, like, firepower once you hit level 6 and above to try to at least end this game in the mid-game stages before the Naga Siren gets huge. For sure. Well, for TNC at the moment, they'll put a high priority on supports that can lock down the Enigma, or they can go for an Undying and just go full and aggressive. I suppose that's a decent round way, or way around it as well. It's going to put a lot of pressure on 5 Eva inside the laning stage, and that's very threatening. When you already have a Naga and Enigma, that does weaken up your lanes quite a bit. Naga Siren, a melee carry that doesn't really have the greatest lane presence. If she's laying mid against the Queen of Pain, that's usually innate loss. So if I've ever going to try and patch up that weakness by picking up a Lich. It's something that may help out enough. Of course, the Ice Armor, for example, it's nice against physical damage. And up against throw, of course, that does make it a little bit better, especially if more ranged heroes are to come from DNC side, which, with the Disruptor there are, of course, the Static Storm now is going to be a just key thing for them to be able to shut down this Naga Siren. Maybe there's going to be a Queen of Pain going for an Orchid, of course, it might instead be an Aghanim Rush for the Queen of Pain instead, but if she goes for an Orchid, like, sooner or later, at least, the Naga Siren is going to have a Mata style to just deal with that anyway, so they're going to really need this Disruptor to be on point with the ultimate. Yeah, even though Undying has been nerfed as well, a lot of these heroes have been at least touched around with, or I'm that's not the right way to say it, but have been tweaked in the last patch. They're still very potent heroes, and I honestly don't think that the changes are going to affect the meta that much immediately. Um, yeah, at the moment we're going to see the next stage of bans coming out with a Lashrak ban out by Fave Ever. Pretty interesting there. TNC's lineup, if they would have gone for a Lashrak, would have been very glass cannony, unless they got a lot of farm on that Lash. 
they very easily fall to the likes of Centaur Warner's burst, but it seems that 5 Eva just want to make sure that they can delay this game as long as possible. And I suppose, fair enough, the amount of tower damage that they'd have, if they had Edict on top of the draw, uh, it could have been insane. Well, <laughs> I guess lucky for 5 Eva that it will not be something that they're going to have to face here, but TNC themselves, what do you even ban out as the last one? I mean, if you look at 5 Eva, they do need one more core unless they want to run an Enigma actually on a lane. It could very well be though, just like an Enigma off lane, maybe even an Enigma Lich off lane with Centaur in the safe lane, Naga mid, and then like plus one, but it is most likely still gonna be just Enigma in the four position and just going for the greedy like four core farm style. Yeah, I think that's probably the better way about it. Although an Enigma Lich lane is incredibly annoying, especially with the amount of income that's reduced. I think TNC could switch around their lanes in such a way that they wouldn't be affected too much by that. If TNC had something along the lines of a Spectre, Anti-Mage, really hard farming hero, then maybe that looks a little bit more attractive, but for the time being it's going to be a Jakiro for 5 Eva. Combos really nicely with the Naga Siren, Song and Ice Path Macropire is pretty darn good, and their team fight combo is pretty huge. If you get a black hole onto a handful of heroes, TNC's team is just going to melt. That said, I still think that 5 Eva are going to run into an issue with their laning stage just being a tad bit weaker, and we'll have to see how TNC, or if TNC rather, will be able to snowball that one into some sort of tangible advantage. They're gonna almost certainly have to, although I suppose when you're like mostly up against Naga Siren come late game, you might still be able to just deal with it. Of course, Naga Siren's strength isn't necessarily just straight out team fighting; it's just a split push and preventing really fights from happening, yet still being able to push your enemy base somehow. But TNC, 18 seconds and counting down. They really have a just tough road ahead of them here, but... They have been a team that has shown that they can make it happen, and now with a Pakna to just help out with their pushing power, as well as, of course, dealing with Nagasar and Illusion straight out with an Aghanim's ultimate there. I kind of like this pick, even. It's very all-in coming out from TNC. They have a timing window that's very specific. If they take this game late, Undying and Pugner are hardly going to be contributing at all. And even the Draw Ranger, to a lesser extent, with the amount of jump coming out from a Blinking Centaur, Blinking Enigma, maybe even a Blink out Jakiro after he gets the Yule Scepter, TNC are going to find it difficult to win this game unless they get a lot of early momentum. That's kind of what their draft is built around. That said, I do like what they're bringing to the table, and I think that their five heroes that they've picked are pretty darn good, but it's... Almost impossible to count out a Miracle Naga Siren. Okay, so my Dota just crashed out of nowhere. That's... Unfortunate. That's unfortunate for sure. I'm probably gonna have to mute my microphone just in case once I load into the game because it may go bonkers, but... At least I should ha have the ability to reconnect. And also I got confirmation that actually MVP versus Chigard will not be waiting for the end of this game. So, worst comes to worst, we're just gonna finish this game and then jump onto Dota TV. Yeah, I have no idea what um, is going on with the schedule, but either way, we're just going to try to run through it as fast as possible. To introduce the TNC side, we're going to have a Disruptor played by Seven, Noji going to be playing on the Draw Ranger, AU on the Undying, Tihi on the Pugna, presumably going mid, and Sam H on the Queen of Pain. Um, yeah, at the moment, I have no idea what the lanes are actually going to shake down to be, but I think Tihi is TNC's mid player. I believe so as well, but as we are post, I can introduce the 5 of side as I have just come back into the game now. It's going to be Ysera, of course, on the offlane as the Lich for now, leaving Miracle on his famous Naga Siren. KS to be the Enigma in the jungle with Poloson is on a Centaur, and the last one is going to be Chibix on the Jakiro. But which one is the support out of those, Centaur or the Jakiro? It probably should be the Jakiro, right? Yeah, that would be um, my guess, at the very least. I think they'd love to get the Centaur up and running with a decent amount of farm to get his Blink Dagger and Aghanim Scepter up at a reasonable click. But then again, Five Eva could also just leave the Jakiro solo safely. And although TNC's lane's going to be very potent, Chipix can get some experience down here. And with a Lich Centaur into the off lane, that might work out nicely for 5 Eva, depending on how these lanes end up working out. TNC going to drop all of their heroes, and they bump into Chibix, although with no further way to catch out Vision or catch out the 200 Dragon, he's going to end up surviving. TNC are not going to get anything out of this bottom rotation, except for a uh, ward on the Magic Bush spot, which might slow down Enigma's farm, but then again, um, Chaos could end up just farming inside Ancients or inside the enemy woods. Yeah, Chikiro isn't really that far up on getting sentries as well if he wants to or well rather he could just buy sentries straight out if necessary almost so 
that just means that magic push ward, although it's nice just blocking out two camps with one ward, of course, it is also the easiest just ward to deward because it is that obvious. You just go in, you see the big camp block, big camp being blocked. You see the just pull camp blocked, and you know which ward it is. Or at least, of course, there might be two wards, two separate ones, but the magic push ward is something you are going to check for sure. Yeah, Enigma's jungle is going to be further blocked by a sentry, placed out by the undying. So um, I think for the Enigma, unless they want to commit very heavily into dewarding his jungle, or if KS gets very lucky with um, his first set of D wards, he's probably going to have to go elsewhere for his farm, or else he's just going to be very slowed down when it comes to his income. He's going to spot out to the large camp, has been blocked, but uh, usually this one is pretty easy to deward. Instead, he goes over the medium camp, he'll farm up there for the time being, and I suppose fair enough. Yeah, he's just going to have to get something going for himself. I mean, you never want to be just idle as an Enigma, and he can still make it happen with just utilizing a couple of camps, although it's definitely not going to be as easy. As long as he has some form of an income, it's probably still going to be fine. As now, in the bottom lane, Chivix will be up against this dual lane, and it's going to be a hard lane. I mean, Shakira's movement speed isn't the greatest. There's the blink forward. Body blocking isn't quite there, but they will get the TK. Shadow Strike as well, but he should be able to eat his way through the trees and get back to safety. Yeah, and so the mid lane Naga Sirens being pressured a little bit by the Pugna as far as the Raw Harass is concerned. But since the Naga went for such an early bottle build coming out from those starting items, she's going to have that already. And um, at that point, I don't think he can actually zone out the Naga by himself. They are going to leave Chimix 1 or V2 down in the bottom lane. He gets the Queen of Pain undying. This is a lane that Jakiro is under threat in but at the same time is probably going to be able to get a decent chunk of experience. Chaos should know that there is a magic bush ward, and he's going to go ahead and deward that out. So he's going to have his full jungle to work with sooner rather than later. Um, also dewarded out the large camp as well. So the Enigma is going to be pretty happy with himself. Although it took a little bit longer, he's going to have an unimpeded farm, uh, farming time inside his woods sooner. Yeah, I'd say it took a low enough time just because the second camps or the two minute camps have already spawned for those. So he's definitely going to be able to catch up and already up to 7 last hits anyway. Arguably, yes, the satyrs maybe not the biggest creeps to get that way. But I, I think you're really up nicely touched top. on the point. Oh. Glimpse back onto Polisan, dropping very low, trying to get in range to kill off the Dro, but it's going to be first blood drawn by TNC. Man, Ysera just leaves the lane for a little while as the Lich and suddenly Centaur goes down, of course. Lich did go to just make it so that Nagasaren can bottle up that rune for himself, but in the end, not really worth worth it. And I, I really think that since they are like semi-sacrificing Chibix at the moment, yes, he's getting some XP, zero last hits though, they kind of have to guarantee that at least Drow isn't having that fun of a time and Polosan can still get towards a fast blink dagger. Otherwise, they're just kind of like losing two lanes at the same time. Even with the Lich constantly dying, Drow Ranger is on par with the other farming heroes in this game, and with that extra first blood is actually a tad bit ahead. So honestly, I don't think the top lane is really accomplishing that goal for the 5 FS side. They might be able to get a Centaur Warner, a blink at a reasonable click, but he's going to be constantly babysat by the Lich, and if he's not, I'd expect that kill to happen again, even with just the Drone Disruptor. The amount of physical damage they're putting out is pretty significant, as is everybody on their team. The extra 9 damage is really going to help out Pugna too. And um, it's inside the mid lane versus Miracle. Yeah, it's really just something that definitely cannot be underestimated, the damage incoming from that. Well, good thing is that uh, so I suppose Undying isn't getting the extra bonus there, but it's really a minor thing anyway, as AO now on the Undying is just dragging the creeper away, making it so that the double pull won't come through for Chibix and Chibix. But at least he didn't manage to just delay the creeper for long enough for the die creeper to reach the tower, so he's going to be getting some XP. Hit level 3 now, a little bit above that as well. But he still has a just long and tough just lane ahead of him. Yeah, pretty much. Usually as a safe lane farming Jakura, you'd want to be able to shove out the wave. But with the screams coming up from the Queen of Pain, and with the threat of Undying always there with the level 2 tombstone, maybe being able to kill off the Jakura, Liquid Fire isn't going to get its value immediately this game. There's going to be pings up towards top coming out from the center. It looks like they want to find the Disruptor over in the sidelines, but he's nowhere to be found. He's a little bit too far away. They're going to control both runes for the Pugna, if I'm not mistaken. Double damage rune has been picked up by Tiki. As they're going to bump into the Enigma inside the woods. They have Tombstone. They're going to drop it, going strong onto KS. Will they be able to get in range, however? He has two zombies onto him, but after killing one, it looks like KS should be able to walk out of your home free, although another decay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Tiki's here with the Decrepify and a blast. That'll be the end of Enigma's life. Yeah, just the decrep has a pretty huge range at this point in time, and even though the slow may not be the biggest on level 1, 30% just 
it was still enough to make it so that anyone would even try to just keep on running. And, oh, Knoichi drops low himself, he's here, gets a Frost Blast, but cannot turn around, he needed one more attack onto the Drow Ranger. Of course, he did end up just saving his Centaur teammate, but... Oh, mid lane as well, Miracle, never mind. For second thought, he's gonna be in some trouble, but... Unable to just burst him down in time. Naga Siren's going to survive, but that doesn't make up for the fact that TNC are getting a lot out of their other lanes. Drow Ranger, although dropped very low in that last exchange, is going to be able to survive, and oh, they only have one Tango, so he's probably going to have to go all the way back towards base. But even so, that's two kills for the Drow, and a lot of gold already treads in Aquila finished up. So I'd say for TNC now, the start is pretty solid. I mean, even Disruptor having 10 last hits just has himself the boots. Can easily buy the wards on top of that if necessary. I mean, I'm almost certain he's gonna be in the five position, leaving Undying as the just kind of a farming support here. Although, depending on how it goes, maybe they're gonna have to just give the disruptor a little bit of farming priority, try to go for like a super fast Aganims, for example. But how well is the Enigma doing? Level five, I suppose it's still not that bad. Has the Soul Ring, has boots as well. Highly likely gonna go for the Mech Nexus D. He trying to just beat Miracle to the rune, but he's gonna get Frost Blast as Miracle. Can you go for the kill? Nope, not with AO coming in with a tombstone, no less. But it's just gonna be a zoning one. Yeah, it looks like in the end that tombstone won't get them a kill onto Miracle, and that's kind of unfortunate for TNC. Even though their other lanes are doing very well, Miracle's having a pretty free time inside the mid lane. The Pugna has been roaming around and maybe not getting as much as he'd need to to really make up for the fact that Miracle is sitting on 44 last hits and has pretty much unimpeded um, usage of his side of the map. There's going to be a blink away by the Queen of Pain. Things are going to slow down for a little bit, and that's exactly what 5 will want to have happen. TNC need to keep up the momentum, and probably that's by involving the Queen of Pain some kills. Maybe one at a Chipex brewing down towards bottom, although not enough mana for the ultimate. Queen of Pain probably won't be able to get this kill now. Tanking the creep wave is going to be dropped pretty low, and Jakiro is able to TP straight out. Yeah, definitely it's going to be Sam Mage, or he should be Paper Chicken, just wanting to get that 8 minute rune as well on the bottom side if necessary, or if he can at least. He has the bottle, it is empty though, and bottle crowing will just take such a long time, and it's something that Pogna is also doing at the moment anyway, so the courier might just be busy by itself. Yeah, very well could be. 3-0 over TNC are still in a decent spot, especially if they can kill off Miracle. They do have vision onto him, they have a glimpse available, not for 24 seconds, and it looks like Miracle's gonna get up to the high ground, trying to juke out another blast that's not even there. Miracle turns around, another blast is going to be pump faked as Miracle is going to song, and then set up for an Ice Path Macrofire onto TV. The Ice Path is going to be a little bit off the mark, and Miracle's dropping low. They have another glimpse in nine seconds, will he be able to dodge the Thunderstrike damage? He will, and Miracle survives because of that well-placed mirror. That's going to be a one-for-one -one trade, and 5 Evil will be very happy if they get their Naga Siren out to safety. That was a extremely risky play, and oh, top lane, there's the Stampede, they want to go in the draw, they might even get the kill here, double edge is there, first blast already used, but Knoichi tried to TP out, and he will succeed with it as well. That was really heads up play, just starting the TP as fast as he could, and well, Ring of Aquila just providing a little bit of extra armor seemed to help. Yeah, pretty close call on both accounts for the draw and the Naga Siren, but... Um, still, the Pugna and the Queen of Pain are getting a decent chunk of farm. We have a haste rune on the Queen of Pain, so maybe that's enough to get this kill onto Miracle in bottom if he's not careful. He doesn't have the song for two minutes. This is a really sketchy spot to be in. If you are Miracle, he's going to be screamed once. They have Toonstone coming in from the north, but in the end, they're not going to throw it, although the Decay does connect, and they know where Naga was a couple seconds ago. They won't be able to find him right now. It was kind of like half assed aggression kind of style coming out from the Queen of Pain, I think. I think Jushua could have just popped haste, go for the Shadow Strike, the initial slow tombstone to follow and really try to burst him down. I mean, they should really know that the Song of Siren is on cooldown. It's a 3 minute cooldown after all on level 1 as Pagna. Ice Path will catch him, but Miracle did not want to follow up there of course. Oh, Chibix, look, to turn around almost happened as well with the life train. But bottom lane 5 will have to have somebody come in to just stop this push. It is Polosan, but he can't really go up to the creeps without being a little bit afraid of dying. No, honestly, if he goes to pull off the creep bagger, he'd probably end up losing his life. There's no one else close. Queen of Pain will get a tower destruction bottom for their trouble. But at the moment, I think five ever are okay with losing a handful of tier ones. Naga Siren has the bottle crowing back to the base as the Aquila wand. And from here on out, you just need to buy time so that Miracle can get up that sacred relic and eventual radiance that will be incoming. They need a blink dagger on their centaur before they can go aggressive themselves. But a tier one here and there is not the end of the world for five of this side. It's perfectly fine, I mean, that's kind of the lineup that TNC have chosen to go for, and 
Just losing a couple of towers is just what the strategy is for, and you can't really stop it this early on either. But center, how close is he? Well, he needs still quite a bit for it. And now mid lane, Miracle might be in trouble. Song 57 still on cooldown. They will get the glimpse and the static storm as well if necessary. Yes, just in case. Sonic wave to follow. Decrypt, and that is the kill. A very high priority target for them as the Stampede goes up towards top, trying to catch out the Drow. She turns around for a Gust, catches three, and from here on out, they can't go for any further. In fact, slowing down Polisan, the turnaround potential is... Uh, almost there, but with an ice path that should be able to disengage them nicely, except for Sarah, who gets caught under a tombstone with a handful of cross arrows. He's going to drop very low under his tower. Queen of Pain onto the back lines. He's going to drop Shaver. It's pretty low, but again, just doesn't have the damage. A double edge will connect. The Sam is going to make his way out. Double kill for Tihi as he finishes up the Jakiro and the Centaur with a blast. That was a turnaround and a half, I should say. Of course, really nice escape from the Ranger as well, and even with the Stampede, just throw started running fast enough. The reaction was there. Nice cast as well to follow up. For a second I did think that the Frost Arrows maybe on center was overkill and should have tried to go for the Lich instead, but... Ends well, all's well, and suddenly they got the tier 1, the tier 2 is taking heavy damage as well, and I wouldn't even be surprised if it completely went down, because without the Stampede, without Lich being level 6 for the Chain Frost, I don't think they can defend. This is scary, although losing a tier 1 here and there is okay for 5 Eva, losing these tier 2s is really going to constrict the farming space of the Naga Siren for the early game while she's saving up for the relic and later on too is oh. everybody disconnects uh somebody somewhere tripped over a power cable <laughs> well i just want to thank lord gaben and valve for implementing this feature that if somebody gets disconnected the game auto pauses yes because that would be very awkward if we just have to stand here as everybody's out because i'd expect that that means that the lobby host is also not there um Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have the privileged spot of maybe being like the only one still in the game. Of course, probably some other casters as well for other languages, but... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's that just as a sight to see, man. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen full teams disconnect, but it's very rare that you see everybody in the entire game disconnect simultaneously. Um, so hopefully they're all right over in Malaysia right now. Um, seems that they're having some sort of internet trouble. I have no idea how long this is going to take and how long we're going to be sitting here, but for the time being, TNC are rolling with a lot of momentum. Their net worth advantage is about 7,500. Experience, although slightly less, is the price they're going to have to pay for 5 manning so much, but they can keep up this aggression. Pugna is really happy for this time of the game. Level 9 is about all you really need with Arcane Boots. Point Booster has more than enough mana to spam out those Nether Blasts. The extra damage from the Dro combined with the Tombstone allows... TNC to have a lot of AoE control inside the team fights without actually initiating. They just run at the towers and mow them down. Yeah, I really think, like, even if they were behind a little bit in XP, TNC that is, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Just because, even if 5 will get a little bit of levels, they also need just the items to back it up, especially the Blink Dagger and Polosun, maybe on the Enigma as well, and well, speaking of that, the Enigma item, of course, is going for the mech first, which is just a really standard item build, but... Do you think he should go for like a straight out PKB next, or is he still going for like a blink after the mech? Uh, blink into BKB after the mechanism sounds fine. I think the bigger issue is that Enigma just doesn't have very much for 11 minutes in the game. Usually you'd like to have your mech all the way done at this point, and probably two minutes ago in an ideal world. But after dying twice and having his camps blocked, even though he got the D-Wards off, it did probably cost him at least uh, two to three. Um, camps of neutrals that he could have farmed. So KS is not having the greatest of games at the moment. They do have the black hole up and running and song, so the potential for the big wombo combo is still there coming out from 5 Eva. So, um, hmm. Let's see if they can actually pull this off. Tier 2 tower in top has already fallen, and I'd expect Tier 1 tower in mid to be going down without a fuss. But if TNC commit for anything further without getting a pick off first, the potential for that big 5-man wipe combination is there from 5 Eva. Their damage is more than enough at this point in the game. Yeah, it's really them just having to start to land those wombo kind of combo styles. They definitely have it in them, and Lich now has hit level 6 as well. Even has 8 <laughs> extra XP. And they did, in the meantime, just file in a question towards the like admins of the tournament or the organizers, and they said they're fixing it now. Unfortunately, it's not the most informative thing, but at least they're on it. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, hopefully it'll... <laughs> Uh, not take them too long to fix it. I would like it like it. It's rather early in the morning for them. It's 10.30 for them now. 
It would be fine. It's like, oh, our tech guys are still sleeping. Sorry. It's like, it's going to take some time, but it's probably not. I mean, 10.30. I suppose it isn't even that early in the morning. No, I'd, I'd expect most people to be awake. I mean, if... Well, what's the time for you anyway? It's it's probably closing in on midnight soon, right? Uh, it's like 10 p.m. But I just woke up because my sleep schedule is completely <laughs> borked after the last two days. Oh, uh, well, yeah, just having to cast early Southeast Dota or early to, like, afternoonish Southeast Asian Dota really messes with American time zones, I guess. For me, it's just waking up a little bit earlier. It's 5.30 for me at the moment, but it's not that bad. Yeah, that's acceptable. I don't know. For me, it's probably, like, the worst hours to be up. It yeah, spans it's, it's, from, it's like... like, the exact opposite for you. Or not the exact opposite, but it's, like, almost a 12-hour difference or so. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, acceptable. I enjoy doing it, so that definitely does help. Oh, in fact, it is a 10 hour, uh, 12 hour difference for you, isn't it? Yeah, 12 or 11. Yeah, so if it, it it's 10.30 for you, or is it 9.30? It's 9.30. Okay, yeah, then it's, oh, it's 13 hours then, even, I suppose. Somewhere in that ballpark. Pretty much on the exact opposite side of the globe. Yeah, it <laughs> sounds like a somewhat sucky time arrangement, but yeah. We're getting to cast some pretty awesome Dota there as looking at some item progression as we are just paused anyway. The Orchid will be the first item Queen of Pain is going to be building into and of course if you can get it with a nice timing which they should if they get this many towers down. It will just mean that it's going to be coming out a hell of a lot earlier than a Manta style and a Naga Siren. Unless of course Naga Siren chooses to go for like a first item Manta style but if that's the case I think TNC will also be pretty happy that the Naga Siren isn't rushing Irradiance. Yeah, if they can force out a Mantis cell from Naga, her farming speed's going to be pretty much completely gimped. And even though it's fairly risky to go for that Radiance when you do have that Orchid Queen of Pain on the enemy side to get the jump onto you, it's a risk you're going to have to take. Um, yeah, it's already a game where 5 ever rely almost exclusively on Miracle to get huge. And for the time being, that's just going to take maybe a little too long. I'm not sure if they're going to be comfortable with how this map is developing for TNC. They're starting to constrict them already, and although for the time being Radiant have decent OBS vision out, maintaining that really isn't going to be very easy for them. And at that point, TNC have a Queen of Pain that can jump on you, and has more than enough backup from the rest of her team. And even Queen of Pain by herself, her damage output, both physical and magical, is pretty significant. The extra 30 damage from Drew helps a lot. So yeah, TNC definitely must be feeling comfortable, but... I'm not sure if you even spotted this out, but there's a Tire Officer reward like right like, straight under the Hellbear Smasher in the Tire or Radiant Jungle rather. And that's just a ward that first of all will give some pretty decent vision on where Miracle or the Enigma will be farming, but even now they still just also want to block out the jungle camps if they can, just because it's gonna be almost the only thing Miracle can farm, jungle. Yeah, and any amount of time that they can stop Miracle from getting that Radiance is more time for them to work with to get value out of the Pugna on dying, uh, which is wonderful for the TNC side. I think it is a wise move for them. They don't have the greatest Roshan lineup, but they're still reasonable at taking it with the damage coming out from Dro, and they're pretty good at fighting inside the Roshan pit with Sonic Waves, Static Storms going down, then the double units of the Netherward as well as the Undying Tombstone, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and take a tier 1 tower and then back off to get that Aegis up, presumably for Dro, maybe for Queen of Pain. Um, but yeah, TNC, as long as they keep on swimming and keep on going for these objectives, things are looking good for them. 5 Eva need to hope for a big fight, and I think that relies on Centaur getting a blink as well, but at the moment, there's no place for him to farm. The Centaur was supposed to get a decent amount out of the lane, getting dual laned with the Lich, but at the moment, he's the second lowest net worth in the game. It's not looking all that good for them, and 5 Eva, on paper the laning like was decent, but TNC just having a rather strong lane to face the dual lane as well, the draw as well as the disruptor. I mean, Lich isn't the greatest, just like auto attack harasser there, and well, throw and disruptor, especially the disruptor with the precision aura help there, could just harass a little bit more efficiently than a frost blast could in return, so really well done by TNC to just get up to this point, but so... Them being in the top lane now, is Roshan something they're going to rotate into? They're probably going to want to just kill some people anyway, just in case of that Wombo combo happening. Like, maybe get an Enigma or the Naga Siren down before Roshan. But, how fast could they even Roshan? I mean, with a Ranger, it's reasonably fast as it is, even without minus armor, but... 
Do you think somebody is going to pick up a medallion for the team? Potentially, it wouldn't be a bad pickup on the Disruptor, but I think they'll rather get an Agadim Scepter up for him, and that would leave it to be in the hands of the Undying if they want to pick up that item. Do they have a mech on anybody else on their team? No, I don't think there's really room in any of these heroes' item progression to pick up a medallion, even though it is a really good value pickup. I think they'd uh, rather get towards the mech and Undying and Agadim Scepter for Disruptor. Yeah, probably so, and mech, it's not just exactly a necessity, especially if they can just get pickups as easily as they have so far. But if you're like going for a all-out pushing lineup, almost, just not having a mech, like not having anybody build a pipe, for example, as well, does feel a little bit scary. I mean, pipe also could be excellent. You're up against Chain Frost, Macro Pyre there, of course, Centaur just with the Hoofstone Double Edge. But we'll see what the item progression brings to us, because we're only 11 minutes in after all. Yeah, for sure. At the moment, Five Eva rely to have or rely on having their entire team up for the team fight. Maybe if they lose the Lich, they can still take a decent exchange. But if they lose the Jakir, a lot of their follow-up damage to the black hole is lacking. If they miss the Centaur, getting in position for the full combination is really hard. And without the Naga Siren, the setup's not there. So, hmm. Yeah, let's see how comfortable TNC will be in this game. Honestly, I have no idea of the progress of what's going on inside Malaysia. Um, or what's happening on the main stream. So at the moment, we're just high and dry as we wait for this game to continue. I'm just, like, every 5 to 10 seconds, I'm, like, hoping from the bottom of my heart that at least one player will, like, reconnect as a, like, sign of faith, kind of. <laughs> but so far, not really the case. Of course, it's been about 10 minutes since this happened, maybe, like, slightly more. Just a few minutes, give or take. Looking at the mainstream, they're not really having any information, just showing us the bracket and whatnot. So, well, maybe they are talking over the bracket, but it's probably nope. still going to take some time. I guess the one positive is that if it's around the entire venue, it's also going to mean that MVP versus Chi Guard is going to get delayed anyway. So there's a higher chance of us making it into that game properly. Fair enough. At the moment on the mainstream, it is just music. They actually properly set up music for once. It's great, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just chill. Any thoughts on the new balance change, I suppose, since we have some time? Do you think that's really going to change things, or for the most part, is it just small tweaks? I think the Visage one was maybe the most necessary. Of course, Undying slightly getting nerfed as well. Although I have to say, Visage, at least from the games I have been able to cast, hasn't been like that crazy popular of a pick anyway. But it may also just have to do with me casting, at least for European, like the tier 2 teams, and maybe they don't have like a designated visage or just micro player, so to say. But I I think the visage just a familiar update was kind of necessary because four hits was just way too hard to kill them. Oh yeah, it was very annoying to deal with. Um, outside of that, I think that the Silver Edge definitely needed... Um, an increased recipe cost, and then Glimmergape needed some sort of nerves. Even after the addition of the mana cost, it was still ridiculous. And granted, it's still pretty darn good, but uh, yeah, I think for the most part, these are just acceptable changes. Nothing too crazy, but maybe it's going to shake up the meta a little bit. We'll just have to wait and see over the next couple of days. Uh, I remember yesterday when the patch, well, the patch notes at least came out, some guy in a Skype group was like, Chirocopter base intelligence reduced from 23 to 19. Chirocopter, dumb! That was like the first <laughs> reaction for them. Although, it's probably not that big of a deal. He should still have plenty of mana to just go for the rocket barrage. Maybe going for homing missile is going to be a little bit harder now because it does cost quite a bit in mana, but it shouldn't really affect him being able to just use the rocket barrage for early game advantage. Yeah, I, I think he should still be the same old gyrocopter. Although maybe it is going to flavor more towards that farming role, as you said, the rocket a little bit less attractive. I still think Roaming Gyro is um, very, very strong and uh, quite fun to watch him play, too. Hmm. Let's yeah, see. So maybe, what else do we have to talk about? I mean, I guess we can, like, talk about patch notes and, like, changes in general in Dota. I mean, I, for one, really like how they're doing things. At least for the most part, they're not like overly nerfing or buffing somebody. Usually it's like small increments of just buffs coming in or then taking away a little bit as well. And of course, if it's still overpowered, so to say, you can still nerf them a little bit more. Whereas if you went for like a huge nerf pad at the start, then just balancing them back upwards would be harder. 
I think the hero that really has been over nerfed, however, is Terrorblade. One of the Miracle's old standbys. It kind of felt like he got triple hit with the Banhammer. Like, three patches in a row, super significant um, nerfs towards the hero, and then they nerf Illusion pushing, which really was the only niche that Terrorblade had left at that point. <laughs> um, so yeah, honestly, I have no idea when you pick him now. I think, in my opinion, he's the worst hero inside this patch, and that's a little unfortunate, Whoa. but... Whoa. <laughs> well, who else would be worse, right? Like, I think Lone Druid has his place right now, and it's probably so, Terrorblade, So it's still better. go, like, for Husker rather than a Terrorblade. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I think suppose Husker there's is quite actually... a bit of magic damage, yeah. Yeah, I think Husker is going to start being picked up every once in a while. The Silver Edge item really does hurt Huskar, though, being able to disable his Berserker's blood, but equally as scary as Silver Edge on Huskar himself, so... Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I open, think he is open better. Open the Heropedia for this. Just start going through heroes. <laughs> Terribly <laughs> the worst hero, huh? So you'd rather play Pudge? Yes. Every yes. day. All day. Every day. Well, me personally, oh. I'd much rather play Pudge. But also, in general, I think Pudge deserves to be played a little bit more than he has been as of late inside the pro scene. He offers very Techies. unique utility. Techies is overbuffed really hard. Okay, so with the reduction of the landmine thing, you can get solo kills so very easily, 0.5 seconds, any melee hero that you're farming against in lane dies to a mine suicide. It's pretty much having like a quadruple mine stack instantly, which is dumb. And then the mine sign is really good at defending high ground. I'm honestly not sure why teams aren't experimenting a little bit more with the hero. I think he has his place. Um, although he is going to hurt your early game fighting maybe a little bit, I think that... Um, yeah, I'd rather have a Techies than a Terrorblade. I mean, we can always hope for that the teams are, like, secretly practicing with the Techies, but just don't want to whip it out until a big tournament, like, for some teams, of course, the TIA qualifiers. Maybe for some teams, like, the TIA itself. But, to be honest... I would love to see it, yeah. Comparing, like, Terrorblade to... Techies and sites probably isn't even the correct way to approach things anyway. Yeah, it's so. not really fair. I think you compare Terrorblade to Naga Siren and Lone Druid. I think both of those heroes do what Terrorblade wants to be doing better. Oh, better, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a situation where you'd pick Terrorblade over them. I, I just don't see his niche, really. Um, maybe if you have a Morphling Offlane that goes Aghanim Scepter, that's where Terrorblade can become scary. So you get the double Metamorph Terrorblade, so you get six Terrorblades pushing a lane. Um, but that's so very cheesy. <laughs> that's that's cheesy and somewhat unreliable as well, but yeah, it, it's something that I would still like to see. And I suppose like the team loving Terrorblade the most might be Cloud Nine. So if anybody, maybe then. Yep, I I, I want to see it. I I want to see it work out. But honestly, I'm just not feeling him right now. Another thing to talk about, I guess, is Ti. The price pool is ridiculous already. I didn't expect it to be increasing as quickly as it did. To to be honest, for me, it's like the stretch goals feel like eh okay but this time around I, I feel like the success I'm just really hyped for the tournament yeah well I mean that that's for certain but I think the Valve's success in getting the price pool this high this early is not the stretch goals themselves but the compendium bonuses you get for just purchasing points yeah and I think it's just a good business model in general um yeah it's it, it, it feels like a broken just business model because it's so <laughs> successful for them. Yeah, it's it's quite ridiculous, but you know what? I'm more than happy to support it. Yeah, I mean, it, well, definitely have been doing a great job. I mean, just from the start, even just the mere fact that we have Dota TV is something that other games just lack. Although, yes, even like CSGO does have its own CS TV or well, I don't even know what it's called in game but go TV maybe it's not half as good as for example Dota TV has been made just the ticket system everything it's I, I'd say near perfect hmm <laughs> okay it, it's just like uh -huh. other esports really yeah. lack the, the ease of spectating the game which is unfortunate especially since I'm enjoying playing Heroes of the Storm as of late, but there's no great way to early spectate inside the in-game client. Yeah, it's like really the same with Hearthstone. Of course, Hearthstone was kind of created like a lightweight program anyway, especially since you do also want to be able to use it on mobile as it is out now on Android. Well, it's been out on tablets for some time before already, but I think 
like the, the most retarded thing is League of Legends. Although I hardly ever watch the game, the game has been out for so long yet it also really lacks the like interface to watch it in. It, it's only like streams only and more or less nothing else. Okay, so what heroes inside Dota actually have five fingers? Because <laughs> to my knowledge, there aren't very many. Like if you take a look at the like lane creeps, they have three. Eidolons have four. Even just units in general. Enigma's sitting on four fingers. <laughs> That's okay. So have you already gone through all? Oh, Naga has five, right? Yeah. Naga has five. Um, Centaur has four. All of the Eglody should have four, I think, lore-wise. Um, Lich has five. So is it just a species thing? It might be, but if it is, it, it's at least nice that they're like keeping true to the lore somewhat. Just Or they could just be lazy. Nobody wants to animate that fifth finger. <laughs> well, Lich has five, so that's nice. <laughs> Jihiro, how many claws do you have? Oh no, J Jakiro is always just such a wonky. Model. Oh, okay. Jakiro so has he has three claws on his hind feet and four in the front ones. And he also has two like side tails. I'm not sure what to call them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I like Jakiro's design, but I think he could use a model rework. Not even like a full like redesign of the hero, but just adding more polys and retexturing the thing. There are too many four-fingered heroes for my liking, man. <laughs> <laughs> At least give us three then, like Ninja Turtle style. Fair enough. Okay, so we have the Russian caster inside the game. Um, well, he, he's been online anyway, so he's just been disconnecting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that actually changes anything, though, because he's also not actually on the event. I mean, I'm just going to ask for any updates at all just because it's been like 20 minutes now and not a single sign of improving no not a single player not a <sighs> just not, not a single, single finger everybody's <laughs> not a single finger oh wow <laughs> okay so it's really getting to the stage where it's a little bit silly to even keep on waiting so if it keeps on going much longer or if the updates aren't friendly towards us I guess we're just gonna go to like music or something, but okay, so one of the hops probably like switches or something completely died on them. A replacement part is incoming, but I'm not too sure if it, huh. th if that means like somebody running to the shop and getting it or what. <laughs> oh dear. Um, Fast, yeah. it's a Sunday, go to the shop, oh crap, all the like electronic shops are closed. Then they get stuck in traffic, and then they have to, I don't know, run a marathon to actually get the little part to us. Hmm. Is there any way to make a can... great, great movie, doesn't it? It would make a very entertaining movie. <laughs> <laughs> the new e I don't know. Esports action movie. Got to get your new hubs going. <laughs> the hub replacement part. Quest for the hub replacement part. Man, you, you have to make a like proper, proper screenplay for it, and... Easy money. Absolutely. Those esports dollars will pitch it to some big movie studio. We'll hire some great actors for it. Who's going to be the runner? Who's going to go and get the part? <laughs> well, it depends on the budget, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty certain we would have to go with, like, total personalities for the actors and actresses. But while we're on the topic of such things, uh, how involved or how knowledgeable are you of the incoming Warcraft movie? Not much. I know that it's incoming and that's about it. I, mean, I am super hyped. I was a quite a long time World of Warcraft player and I'm just hoping that they are going to make it correct. I mean, they've been kind of postponing the release of it. They finished like filming the actual movie I think in 2013 or something already, but it's just post-production because of course lots of GFX, lots of computer graphics mm -hmm. there. I mean, whenever Blizzard does something, when it comes to their cinematics and stuff, it's always very polished. And it would be very interesting to see a full movie by that, like, 
I, I've been moderately impressed they, by They also have the to, like, nail value. this story with it, though, although... Oh, yeah, for sure. I, you're going to make so many little World of Warcraft nerds very sad. Yeah, it's also the fact that so many people are hoping that this is going to be the, like, one gaming movie to actually succeed, because, for example, there are quite a few, like, Dungeons & Dragons movies out there, and one is worse than the other, man. <laughs> They're so <laughs> bad. Yeah, that, that would be entertaining. I mean, there's good games that are based off of movies, but yeah, that, that would be something. That would be something. Yeah, I'm just super psyched. It's probably due to come out 2016, in about a year from now, I think, is the release date. But on, on a note of movies, Star Wars, excited or not? I'll probably watch it very early on after the release. I can't tell if I'm excited. I, I, I honestly... <laughs> I, I, I'm not getting my hopes up because... No, no, it's... okay, so I really liked the original trilogy. But the, I don't know, the prequels just didn't really do it for me. I I, I really am not sure if they can do anything with the post yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's kind of the same story for me. It's like the trailer for, for this movie already is like... Eh, it can be awesome, but... Of course, it's much better to just... Expect the worst. That way, if it's awesome, or if it's even good, it's like, yeah, it's success. Although, if you're I like, know, it's going to be the best to movie just... ever, you, you're just kind of yeah. setting yourself up for disappointment. Which is sad. Part of me wants to just, I don't know, just be a little kid, really hyped up for it, but I don't know. You're too old for that now. You know yeah. there's no Santa, man. Uh, I know there's no Santa. <laughs> We're just breaking kids' hopes at the moment on stream. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there is a Santa. I believe in him. I'd rather believe in yeah. the Santa's little helpers than Santa, <laughs> which which makes me Why? Make, makes less sense maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what what's the idea behind that? Like I, I don't know. There there's no idea. It's just a belief, man. Our, we'll our, our Lord alive. and Savior Jesus Christ would like us to believe in elves. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, are you a re religious man, Grandis? Uh, not personally, no. Do you know many religious people? I mean, America yes. is rather religious as a country, right? Especially in the southern area where I'm from, where in what we call the Bible Belt, there's like churches on every corner and most everybody's religious. Have you re read or studied the Bible though? Yes. Didn't it take you a really long time? A moderately long time, and it is old language i suppose but it's it's interesting to me i am not opposed to studying it i mean like two months ago or something i was like i'm totally gonna start studying it started reading it a bit like oh damn it, it's it's not the most fun reading I, i'm well of course i had been reading like a really long time at least half a year like every evening just fantasy books fantasy novels whatever just and by that time, I just had enough of reading in general, so I haven't touched a book for like a couple of months now. Although, the Bible is something I would also like to study, just because sometimes when there are like missionaries or whatever you call them, just on the streets coming up to you, trying to, I don't know, get you hyped for it or something, I would like to have a legitimate like reason or a knowledge behind my denial of it. Yeah, fair enough. I think it's something that everybody should invest time in, although that's probably a conversation for another time, not on a Dota stream. Probably so, but <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> but yeah, I think we've really come to a point where we probably... It's smarter for us to just go back to music <laughs> and just wait things for out. Sure. Or... Okay, guys, so terribly sorry for this, but we've been just talking nonsense here almost for more than 25 minutes, closing in on 30 even. So we're just going to go back to music, to the waiting screen. I'll be sure to just set up a text for you as well. And of course, once this game continues, we will be jumping straight back into it as well. At the moment, the issues are with just the server or a network switch dying on venue. And they're working just hardest to replace it. But now we're going to go into music. And guys on chat, don't go too crazy about this game being delayed so much. Grandis, we're back. It happened so fast. It all happened so fast. 40 minutes isn't necessarily fast, but... Oh, no! <laughs> I mean, the unpo unpause at least happened fast once everybody came back, yeah, but... 
the repaws happen just as quickly. Hopefully this isn't going to take too long, but um, just to give everybody a recap, right now TNC are up 8-1 to one in the kills. They're looking really good in experience and net worth. Their lead is upwards of 7,500 in the net worth, and really they're rolling with a lot of momentum. After a lot of these towers have died, Naga Siren still needs a lot of time before she can get her relic up. She's less than halfway there, about 12 minutes in or so, and... Uh, well, by Bebet, they just need to delay out this game. Not to say that they can't, their high ground defense is pretty darn good, but it's going to be a hard task. Tier 1 tower in mid is going to fall to the Pugna and Queen of Pain as they blink forward for Jakiro. Chasing forward, Chibix is caught out. Can he TP out? Looks like the answer is yes, no way to cancel that close. And TNC, they get a free tier 1 tower, and I think they can keep this up. Eventually, maybe going for Roshan. Yeah, that's actually one thing that we haven't touched on too much is the fact that TNC, they don't have all that much to stop TPs with. There's the glimpse, and that's where it ends. Yeah, eventually Scythe of Ice from Queen of Pain, maybe she even backs off for Yule's Scepter if they really just need to um, get those TPs cancelled. But more than anything, TNC rely on their burst damage in order to stop them um, from getting back to the well safely. And that's going to be really nice for Miracle down the line. With Boots of Travel and a Song cooldown, 9 times out of 10 he's going to be able to survive. They just don't have the lockdown, although they do have a ridiculous amount of burst. That is a problem that maybe TNC run into. It's really going to be just Static Storm needing to be off cooldown if you try to go for Miracle later on in the game if it gets to that. But now the Ranger just has his Mask of Manus delivered out, which of course will speed out Rosh speed up Roshan considerably. Double damage on Pagna definitely not hurtful either there. But 5 Ewa, if only they knew this was happening, it could be such an easy fight, just black hole onto 4 like this. They are splitting up a little bit more now, but it's just 5 Ewa not taking any chances here. Age of the Immortal for the Pugna TNC you want to go for some tier 2s and it looks like bottom tier 2 is the one that's being pinged out now. They want to keep up this momentum as 5 Eva are going to look for split pushing in top lane. Their pushing power is also pretty potent with the Liquid Fire maxed out now on the Jakiro and with Chaos having an Eidolon army there as well. They can very feasibly take this tier 1 but it's probably at the trade of a tier 2 tower bottom lane if they even get that. Yeah, it's going to be somewhat of a just... Hard trade for them, although looks at the pushing power is pretty fast on 5 Ewa, but TNC, just the Nether Blast, of course the Precision Aura helping out Mask of Man throw herself. At least Marksmanship is only level 1 for now, I suppose, but they're still just going on strong, and with the Aegis, they can siege for days, I mean, they have, how many Arcane Woods do they have on their team? It's 2 for now, and it's definitely going to give enough sustain, and D Hero, maybe goes a little bit too deep, going to get Ice Blasted, doesn't want to lose his Aegis randomly either, really. But as long as they can secure some tower damage, that'd be great, but a jump onto the Drill Ranger, dropping low, she's still going to survive, although taking one more tower shot does go down, it's a trade for the Naga Siren, and TNC are pretty happy with that, the Tombstone down on the ground, the Nether Ward too, and they'll keep up this pressure, tier 3 tower is still looking pretty healthy, but a couple more Pugna Blasts, and it won't be, TNC lose a lot of their tower damage with the Drill Ranger losing her life, and now they're going to lose their age, just the blink and double edge coming out from the center, it's going to be Glimpse back more than anything helping the centaur, and that's probably going to stop this push Cold in its tracks, they get an ice path over onto the Queen of Pain, but she'll be able to blink back out to safety. Looks like TNC are going to be repelled. 2-9. to nine. Yeah, Quite a successful defense, I would say. Of course, Miracle dying, definitely not the just priority thing to happen, or the best thing to happen for 5 Eva, but still 2.9k in the bank for her, or him. And Naga Siren should be fine, especially now that there's a smoke as well, so 5 Eva. They want to capitalize on just TNC maybe being split up a little bit for a while. And they're gonna find a target as well. There's no Aegis anymore, of course, but he's pretty tanky. Hooftop does miss, and with this, don't think they can get the kill. And now the turnaround's there with the Decrepify. He gets bursted down so very fast. Everybody else should be able to make it out alive. No way to cancel his TPs out. But TNC, now that they take away the most reliable initiator coming out from the 5 Eva side. They're going to start pushing down mid. And tier 2 tower, I'm not sure if 5 Eva really have it in the tank in order to defend this. 20 seconds is probably all that they need now that Drawing is there to offer the precision aura. And even if he does get there, he needs to be there immediately as soon as they get to that tower. I think they're just going to lay this out as time delayed so that Nagasaren could get up her relic. Probably. Oh, they get the glimpse though. Chibix might be in some trouble. Ayo, even prop, prop just pops the flesh golem and well. They got the macro pyre on cooldown, not that long of a cooldown, and it's gonna be only 20 seconds when he can use it once he respawns. But I really think he had it here too. Oh, never mind, they get the stun onto Paper Chicken, Sam H in some trouble. Can he blink out? He can indeed. 
I mean, for a second I thought I can get another pick off there, but Chain Frost also just came out with TNC. They are somewhat low, and since they're lacking the mech for now, Undying just needs the recipe for it. They can't keep going, they're probably gonna have to back off for now. Even though they're going to be repelled for the time being, they get a pretty big advantage there. Your Orchid's complete for the Queen of Pain. Aghanim Scepter up for the Pugnet. Let's see if they catch somebody on the retreat. Draw Ranger is going to be initiated on by the Centaur, but with them dying Tombstone, the turnaround potential is there. The Centaur is high and dry. No teammates close. He's going to be glimpsed back into the Kinetic Field. They don't even need a Static Storm. And Draw Ranger draws the blood there. Five Eva cannot afford to be going in one by one. TNZ's team is just a little too far ahead for them to afford to do that. I was almost certain that there's going to be some form of backup, at least with the way he went in like that. Of course, he was really hoping for a fast kill onto the Draw Ranger who was farming up the enemy ancients there, just hope to punish him. But instead, suddenly Undying has enough gold for the mech since he was there for the assist, of course. And, well, like I said, Fiverr cannot really afford to go in one by one. But, uh, same note, Naga Siren. Did get that space due to center going in, I suppose, although he probably would have gotten the space anyway. But that's the Sacred Relic finished, so one step, a huge step closer to the uh, Radiance. Even if she gets Radiance at a good timing, which I think Miracle probably will, about 20 minutes or so, which is respectable. It's not the end-all be-all. Nagasar desperately needs Mantis style and Boots to travel on top of that before she can really pose a threat to TNC. And even then, her tower damage really just doesn't compare to TNC's. It is the road to recovery for 5 Eva, but I think that they really need to take a big fight with the Song and the Black Hole combination if they really want to feel comfortable in this game. And of course that combination is a rather massive one. Also KS, just going for the straight PKB may also help, but of course that will mean the lack of a uh, mech for their team. But it not, might not even be that big of a thing, just because getting a huge Black Hole maybe is a little bit bigger of a priority than being able to mech your team in some situations. There is a smoke, however, from TNC side. Only three of their heroes, but they might catch Miracle. Kinetic Field for some vision, but not enough Miracle backs off just in time. TNC, however, now primed and ready to start applying pressure on the map wherever they can. They have drums up in the Pugma. Usually not an item that you're going to see picked up after getting the Aghanim Scepter, but this is pretty much just all in from TNC. And although usually not a pickup that's also a custom, I'd love to see a Vladimir's offering on somebody. Probably undying for TNC's side, but they're going to start bowling down bottom lane. As long as they keep their positioning on point, this can be very scary for 5 Eva. They need to spread out and make sure they don't get caught out by the Song Black Hole. But if they don't, the Tier 3 tower is probably going to go down at the very least. It's already down about a third of its HP or so. A little bit more than that from the previous push. It would be so much easier if Throw had the BKB finished, but of course they want to apply pressure early. Radiance though is finished as well. Tombstone already comes down and nobody dares even come hit the Tombstone if you're 5 ever. For sure, and now they're going to go for that tier 3 tower, taking it down very quickly. Even though Frost Armor does delay Dro's damage a little bit, it's not near enough as they catch up Miracle on the top. Silenced up in the Static Storm, he's going to end up going down. They'll chase for a little bit more, but without that song setup, can they actually do it? Dro probably doesn't want to be chasing it, especially if you get double hoof stomped in. With the Chain Frost bouncing through, it's going to be a decent amount of damage. They lose their dying very quickly, and now the Chain Frost continues to bounce, but now the Centaur also loses his life, even though that's pretty much just many bounces as you can reliably get on a Lich Ultimate. It's just not near enough. They're going to be losing their full set of barracks down towards bottom. If any hero can do it, it's Naga Siren, but now KS pops the BKB and can't get in for the Black Hole. Very awkward coming out for the Enigma, although the melee barracks still stand. He's going to Black Hole solo on the Teehee, getting ripped apart by the Draw Ranger's right click damage. Now Chibix is in a lot of trouble, silenced up by the Queen of Pain, although he kills off the Pugna. They've already gotten what they've came for. Naga Siren can feasibly push out against these creeps, but it's such an early barracks. To be honest, I think 5 Eva kind of made a huge mistake there. Once they lost to Naga Siren, I think just giving away racks would have been way better than just feeding even more heroes into it and still losing racks. But this is where it's going to get even tougher now. I mean, we were talking about the high ground defense of 5 Eva, that it's really hard to push into just Naga Siren into Black Hole. But just Naga Siren got caught and I really felt like Miracle had enough space in the kinetic field to run out of the Static Storm and maybe still get off the Song of the Siren, but I'm not too sure if he was blocked by his own illusions possibly or what the case was, but he didn't run out of the Static Storm corner there. Yeah, there just wasn't an opening. 4 to 15, TNC are well on their way towards a very quick victory. Once they get this BKB on the Drill Ranger, and probably in Aegis too, they do have a Medallion on the end, dying, not going for the Vlads, which is completely fine. It's going to speed up that Roche by quite a bit. 
TNC are going to feel comfortable to go for yet another high ground push. And if I've ever lose two barracks, even though, yeah, if there is a hero to come back from that disadvantage, it is Naga. She just doesn't have enough farm in order to pull that off at the moment. She's the only hero that's keeping up with their counterparts on the side of TNC. Even the Disruptor is very close to having an Ag Scepter with all of the tower gold they've got. Yeah, just scary. And now there's going to be a pipe soon enough as well for the Pogna. Now that the Hoot of Defiance is finished, BKB on the draw. Does AO have anything else apart from the medallion that he's just got? Nope, not yet, but doesn't really need it either. I mean, Undying is farmed enough as it is for this game. I mean, only the Naga Siren will now the Enigma as well is higher on the Radiant side. Well, at the moment, TNC are playing things a little bit slow and steady. They do want to wait out for this next Roshan. And it is going to be up and give or take about 40 seconds or so. So if they get intel of that, they'll be able to take it down very quickly. Mask of Madness Dro with level 2 marksmanship can pretty much take that down by herself, and you had a medallion and all the other heroes from TNC on top of it all. Um, it's going to be a matter of seconds before they're actually able to get that second life. And really, 5 Eva, although that's the dream place for them to fight, they're constantly being pressured by these Mega Creeps in bottom and pushed out by TNC as well in the other two lanes. So I don't think they're going to find that ideal positioning. Yeah, probably not, but... At least Miracle is still farming up, but... If he had like a level 3 Song of Siren, it would be a hell of a lot easier just because Macro Pirate is also on a rather low cooldown so you could combo it up almost every single time. But Lich, even if they like combo get a huge black hole, the Chain Frost for example, it being level 1, it can do quite a bit of damage but it, it's not devastating. Well, at the moment, they pop the BKB, and the drone just going to lay into the center, dropping Pulse on incredibly low glimpse back. He's going to stampede, and that will buy him some space. TNC are not going to be very happy with this first usage of BKB coming out from the Drew Ranger, but even so, the Tier 3 tower is down to about half, and they still have more than enough inside the tank to keep on going for this one. With Tiki, zero second cooldown on that life drain can very easily take out the Nagasar and Illusion, so the Radiance for counter pushing here isn't going to be the greatest. They just need a couple more right clicks from Drew Ranger, one more Pogna Blast to take out this Tier 3, and it looks like they will be able to do a tier 3 tower has since fallen. 5 Eva just can't find an opening, especially when they jump on a miracle again. This black hole is pretty good, but where's the follow up damage? The list chain frost is there. They'll be able to bring down the undying and the pugna, and somehow miracle survives. Although the Drew Ranger and the Queen of Pain are starting to lay into the enemy team, they just can't finish the deal. And 5 Eva pull off what they needed to. They got the black hole that they've been wanting the entire game, but they still have to tend to these lanes. Bottom is pushing it. Yeah, it's still a tier 3 also down at TNC. Yes, they lose two heroes, but it's not that crucial, although I think TNC didn't really play it the best. First of all, like I said, the BKB was not, or didn't get the desired effect out of it either. And I'm not sure, maybe even, of course, if you pop the Static Storm for the center there, you probably just get Song of the Siren straight away. I mean, the Static, static Storm was pretty nice under the Naga Siren, but the follow-up was only the Queen of Pain, and although Sonic Wave does a lot of damage, as we saw, it's just not quite enough by itself. So TNC... Probably respawn, well, get all of her ultimates on cool or off cooldown, take Roshan and then go for another push. Alrighty then, we'll keep on inside this game. Five Eva after that defense are going to feel a lot more comfortable now that Miracle has his boots to travel. But if he gets caught out here, it could be disastrous. He's leading out over towards the right side. The smoke has popped, and now Stampede's going to be used to go up towards the north. They kill off the Disruptor on impact, but now they come in. The Hoofstomp isn't going to be well enough because of the BKB on the drone. Now she chases forward onto the back line. Shibix trying to TP out. It looks like it's going to succeed. No, the damage is there. And that's going to be two kills for the TNC side, although crucially, they do make it out with Miracle. Of course, Miracle surviving is key there, but even so, Center does not have a buyback. Jakiro probably doesn't want to buy back. And of course, Black Hole is still on cooldown at TNC. That's the biggest thing they can take advantage of, as... Well, they're already pushing in as well. Creep Wave is coming. Jakiro has to buy back here. But... Will the Ice Armor by itself be enough to save this Rex? I have my doubts. Yeah, at the moment, the Draw Ranger and Queen of Pain's damage is just a little too high, even through the Ice Armor of the Lich. And they'll have a couple of Pugnum Blasts, too. It's falling very quickly, and 5 Eva cannot defend without a Black Hole. It's just such a long cooldown, and even though it saved their bacon last time around, TNC hit their timing window, and that's two sets of Barracks completely up for them, and a Roshan that they can back off and take. There's really no reason for you to risk this game at this point for TNC, although... Naga Siren with Radiance can be a nuisance. Miracle hasn't hit critical mass yet and won't for probably 20 minutes. Yeah, it's probably a pretty safe assumption there because you only have the Radiance and Pools of Travels now. Although he has gone for a couple of points into stats as well, of course, instead of going for the Ensnare. 
even then you're just not nearly tanky enough to take on the entire team of TNC there and just the Radiant Spoon by itself isn't doing quite enough. Teehee though? Huh. Isn't upgrading the Hoodoo's Defiance into a pipe. Interesting. He's going to go back for a point booster item. Probably Octarine Core, maybe Bloodstone for Teehee. Um, yeah, but either way, I think going for the pipe probably would have been a little bit better than holding on to this point booster. But regardless, Pugna is still very farmed. And his items are very good value pickups. It's going to make him very tanky up against 5 of his damage at the moment. The majority of that is um, magical damage, so the hood just is a... Casual item in Pugna's inventory is pretty great, and Point Booster is very cost-efficient as well. They're going to take a Roshan, get an Aegis for their team. I would recommend giving it to the Draw Ranger, but no matter who gets it, it's just going to change who's going to sit on the front lines, and it looks like they're going to plunk Teehee there. It's not a bad hero to put there, I suppose, although last time around didn't get the best usage out of it. But the fact is that they only need one set of racks down. Of course, the Tier 3 is also in full health, but... 5v1 out, they're going for desperation tactics, just trying to make it so the TNC will back off and defend, but to be honest, if you're TNC, you're like, yeah, they may take one Rax from us, but we're just gonna take one in return, but in the end, gonna have super-sized Mega Creeps. Miracle going to spawn some illusions and TP out, although this Creep Cutting is going to delay the push, honestly, I think TNC are going to be just fine even without Creeps. They have Creeps going down through the mid lane, disabling the backdoor protection. With that disabled, they can... Feel free to go straight on the high ground. Center jumps in for a hoof stomp. The BKB on Drew stops at his tracks. Long glimpse back, and Center is going to be focused down. Even with the ultimate from the Drew Ranger disabled, they're going to get a song. They have a black hole with the BKB pop. Chaos is going to drop it a little bit of layering there. And Queen of Pain's able to get out for BKB. They focus down the Drew. They are going to lose that hero, but after buyback on the Lich, it's just not enough. Pugna is still standing strong in the front line, so buyback on the Drew Ranger. She's going to start getting back in here, and even if she doesn't, the extra damage for her team is ridiculous. They buyback on their Nagam, buyback on their Nagas. By desperately for their tournament lives here but it's not going to be enough this is going to be megas and probably game for tnc especially if they can mop up the enigma and naga naga siren with the radiance burn is dropping the undying as well as pugna low the pugna is going to drop an ultimate over into the naga siren but still hasn't lost the ages sam is fighting to the death and his death it is going to be but miracles dropping low and will go down Aegis after reclaiming tehe is going to end up coming back up and taking that third and final set of barracks tnc are going to do it they're further on to this tournament as five ever are eliminated yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate for the 5 of course, but TNC extremely well played. Seeing the Naga Siren as the third pick in the draft, they just went even more aggressive with their draft themselves, and they made it work, just good early game, and kind of ran away with the game from there. There was like one push that didn't work out as well as they maybe hoped for, but in general, just executing their strategy perfectly. But with this, we are done for this game. We are, of course, going to have way more games. It's going to be MVP versus Chigard uh, coming up next. So we're going to head into that lobby. So no long dilly-dallying here, guys. And, well, hope to see you for that one. It's going to start soon.